The Gopher Coaches Show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Now, it's the Gopher Coaches Show with Lindsey Whalen and Ben Johnson. Welcome back to another installment of the Gopher Coaches Show. I'm Ahmad Hicks alongside K-Fans Justin Gard and women's head basketball coach Lindsey Whalen. Coach, been a few games since the last time we talked, as always, one and three in that span. But you guys, I would say, should have been two and two. A couple close losses, well, a close loss. We're going to go in chronological order, that Ohio State game. Tough game for you guys. What did you see from your team? What did you want them to do better in that game? Well, that one, um, yeah, obviously that one was, um, you know, a tough game on the road. That was the end of uh, a five-day road trip for us. Mm -hmm. So first um, type of experience for our group where we're, you know, the game before, I guess we'll start with that, is um, we're at Illinois and it's it's mm -hmm. 60 to 60 with a minute to go. And right. and they, they obviously pull out. This was a obviously was a tough one for us. And, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but honestly we, we moved on pretty quick because we knew we were coming home um, for a home stand and get it, getting ready for the stretch run here. It's one of those that they had lost, I think, at that point, four or five. And, um, and you know, Taylor Mikesell gets her, you know, I think thousandth point or two thousandth point, whatever it was, and she goes five for five from three. It just was, you know, a few things that that um, you know that evening that that didn't go our way. Um, you know, obviously, the group played hard. Um, you know, we we could have, you know, obviously taken care of the ball. Um, you right. know, executed better, but um, it was one where it's, you know, two weeks prior they're ranked second in the country. And they're undefeated. So it's, a, you know, obviously a really good game by them and, and not a good one from us. Man, you have a good memory. I was at really? that game and I'm like, what happened that game? Oh, yeah, yeah. Taylor Mikesell was yeah. good. Helps to have a, a yeah. guard who's, you know, approaching 30, um, like so many teams in the Big Ten have. Yeah. Uh, but then you come back home, Wisconsin, that's a tough one because you're right there. It's an overtime loss. You want to come home, you want to get the win. Kids played well that game. It's just yeah. a matter of not making enough plays in the end. Well, yeah, and then, yeah, then you come home and you got to turn it pretty quick and, and get ready for Wisconsin, a border battle. And, um, those have been, you know, tough ones this year. Those, um, obviously, um, you know, growing up here, I've <laughs> been, you know, watching go for Badger games and, you know, go for Hawkeye games for years. So those ones are obviously are, are tough. And, uh, in both cases, obviously this one, we go to overtime, um, both cases, um, you know, unfortunately they beat us, um, you know, both times this year, this one, this one stung, this one stung, no question. Um, you know, you're up at different points. I thought we started out well. Um, you know, she, she takes a timeout, kind of stops our momentum. There were several points of that game, probably five or six points of that game, where, you know, we're, we're able, you know, it's 16 to 12 right here where, we, you know, I want to take it, you know, and our group wants to take it, you know, 19 to 12. Instead, we take a quick shot at the other end. They get, they get kind of a dagger three there from Maddie Wilkie. Um, that being said, it's a minute 20, and um, we got to get a stop, and we're up five. And um, that's, this, that's the areas that we have to continue to grow and continue to learn. And it stings when it doesn't happen, obviously. And then, you know, we go to, um, you know, overtime. And, and at that point, um, you know, the, the wind was out of our sails a little bit. But, but, yeah, you look at, you know, you talk about, like, Illinois, mm -hmm. um, you know, tie game. You know, obviously, at Ohio State was tough. And then you go to overtime with Wisconsin. So these little segments where, you, you know, we could have won two or three or two of three, sorry, and it's just it's just lessons that we continue to grow and continue to work, and um, the group shows up every day for the next day, um, and so I'm proud of them for that, and I'm proud of our coaching staff, and and obviously, um, I'm I'm guessing we'll probably get to it here at some point. We break through in the Nebraska game, but um, but but yeah, you look back at those games, and you know maybe Nebraska doesn't happen if if we don't take some tough tough lumps along the way. And, and something is coming for this group um, that's going to be really positive, um, you know, in games to come, in years to come, that, that they'll have, we'll have all have, have learned from, from some of these tough losses and some, from some of these hard times. I like what you just said there, the growing pains that these young freshmen are enduring right now because despite that game and a close loss versus Wisconsin, Mallory hired a, a, a phenomenal day, 28 yeah. points, 15 yeah. rebounds, and then Amaya Battle, points, double, uh, uh, double, points assist, double, double. Can you just speak about... I guess the Maya battle and being able to do something that not a lot of people are able to do and even Mallory showing up big and you know it's how it's going to pay off in years to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's there's no question. I mean, she was, uh, yeah, really, really good. I mean, she she kept us, you know, our rebounding that day was was phenomenal and, 
And then obviously when you at this level, stretch four and, and you're just four player in general is such a big, such a big position. And she's um, heck of a take there. Um, I don't know. I still don't know how she um, how she was able day. to finish that one. So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I thought that both of those, well, they've both had you know some some ups and downs and things, but they keep showing up, they keep working, and um, I look back and I'm like, she broke the record with. I, I probably I wasn't even in the conversation as a freshman. I should have I should have passed more as a freshman, and there's no question Rachel should have passed more too. Um, I think we'll hear from her later, but um, but yeah, good good for good for th- those guys, and hey, you know I, I just am excited to continue to see the. The record books be um, you both needed filled better up. shooters. We'll, we'll say you both needed better shooters around you. We'll, we'll give you an alibi. You can say that. Well, I don't want to throw. Hey, it's, yeah, it's you, also, they can't say that. I'll do that. I'll well, that. you can say that, but it's also alumni weekend this weekend, so That's I'm going to see a lot of former we'll, teammates we'll, on we'll Saturday. So we right got to kind of we got to be <laughs> we got to be careful. So Nebraska, you mentioned it. Um, what a great night, and yeah. it wasn't because <laughs> you know, and I'm sure it was a big sigh of relief for everybody. Um, I, know, I don't know who was happier. You or, or I was happy, you. Lynette, my partner on the radio, she needed that. Ben, your husband, maybe yeah. needed that more than anybody. Um, but to see you guys break through, and yeah. you can talk about, you know, Mara Braun was electric that night, I think 28 yeah. points, yeah. 8 yeah. rebounds. But yeah. Angelina Hammond playing the game of her goal for life. Oh, yeah. Katie Baravich with her best floor game of the season. Yes. And uh, Izzy Gradwell, who we literally had to kick out like four minutes before. She didn't want to get off the court. Yeah. She's always shooting, but that's what, to me, that night represented is all these players that, as you say, kept showing up, got a really nice moment at home against a team that was right there in the NCAA tournament conversation. Yeah, going into that game, they're, they're uh, last four in, you know, and we bump them into to being out. And so, yeah, I mean, so many moments from that game, as you mentioned, um, you know, Katie here with, you know, getting getting the ball up the floor with really good tempo, um, you know, has six assists in that game. Yeah, Mara uh, with 28. Just, you know, even right there, you see, you see some really good, um, you know, gap help from Izzy. Um, you know, and then, well, why are we showing? Come on now. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great play here for my call. Well, it was a back and forth game. So, yeah, we can show we can show Nebraska scoring a little bit too. Great poise there for my call to keep it and then get it to Mara. Obviously, Mara started feeling really good. So, um, so yeah, and then obviously the the play, you know, that, um, that we'll all remember as when, you know, going through different times and going through different struggles and then, and then coming up with the win. And then this one too, I mean, you know, great call by Coach Shimmy getting an, uh, you know, Angelina on the ball, some length, and then we end up, you know, you got to contest and not follow in that situation. So, um, yeah. huge play, really um, great kick from Mara. We took care of the ball really well that game and um, a fun moment for our squad. What exactly does a win like that, the come from behind, last second win, do for a team? Well, you know, we talked earlier that day. Um, you know, obviously this is coming off of a tough Wisconsin game where – it's a border battle, and we're all, you know, we're really disappointed that we didn't um, that we didn't beat Wisconsin at home. Uh, we talked about not being afraid to like start something, and that it's it's hard though. It's hard, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, but don't be afraid of those moments when you can start something. You never know. Basketball is the ultimate karma game to me, is that you because you get out of it what you put in, and that. But it has been hard. It has been hard. Our, our record is what it is. But that doesn't mean that, that you don't stop showing up. That doesn't mean that you're, like I said, afraid to like start something. You never know. Um, I go back to 2010 with the Lynx, and we're going into a game that we had no chance of making. Um, so I'm just going to talk through this a little bit. Go for it. Um, we had no chance of making the playoffs. And Simone Augustus sat in the corner of the locker room and said, we got to finish off this season on the right, the right way. we got to finish this off the right way. This can carry over into next year. And I'm like... Moan, I'm like, because I had been to the playoffs, I had been to the finals with Connecticut. I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm like, no, like we like we missed our chance for the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and I'm not thinking, you know, ahead. And this is why Simone was such a great leader is that we we go out, we beat Indiana at Indiana, and then the next year is 2011. We have the best um, we have the best um, training camp, and we win our first championship that year. Mm-hmm. So ever since then, I've been like a huge believer in every minute you have on the court, every opportunity you have, it can mean something for this year, for this week, for tomorrow, but also for next year and years to come. And so I, I just, I, I just, you know, we kind of felt that way going to the Nebraska game. Now don't, don't be afraid to start something. Um, and I think, you know, even with, with how, how things went this weekend at Northwestern, um, we did start something with that Nebraska win. Right. And, um, it, you know, now obviously now we go into this week, but the group wasn't afraid to start something. Um, and I still feel that way um, moving forward this week. 
I think we all can attest to what you said. Good things are coming for this Gophers program. Mm -hmm. Now, when we return, there's a guest that needs no introduction, but you will very well know her. She's one of the all-time leading scorers in Minnesota Gophers basketball history. She even broke Coach Whalen's record, and she's also dropped 60 points in the game. Rachel Bannum joins our set next. Watching the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Gopher Coaches Show. Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gard, Lindsey Whalen, and we decided there weren't enough points between the three of us, so we decided <laughs> to bring somebody else in, Rachel Bannum, who's no stranger to scoring points. Coach, well, I should I say director of quality control for the That's Gophers, right. but you're still technically a coach. How does it feel being back in this position with the Gophers? It's super fun. I love it. Um, it's just been a blessing to be part of this group. Lindsay's hilarious. We just have so much fun. Like, mm -hmm. everyone from top to bottom is just so much fun to be around. Mm -hmm. And I truly enjoy, like, coming in every day. And I do something different every single day. So I always am on my toes, and I love that. Okay. So what was it uh, like bringing Rachel in? Or what kind of led to saying, director of quality control, we need one of those. <laughs> yeah. And Rachel Bannum can be the person that can provide that. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I mean, just our quality needed more control. And so um, that was first and foremost. But, no, as, you know, as things are progressing in, in, in college athletics, I think that you just, as being in it now for, you know, four years going into in five years, and you want to, you know, obviously bring, bring people in and bring good people in. And so we had an opportunity to, to, to hire Rachel, and she is – She's just such a great, great person. She's such a – she adds so much value, knowledge um, to the organization, to the team. Uh, we're young. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. You yeah. say it like you're old. I was still playing. I'm looking a little lighter there. But anyway, <laughs> I was still playing at the time. But, I mean, gosh, you know, I remember watching Rachel and, and just um, – at first I was mad about the records, but then I was like, really happy. <laughs> now, now, like, you know, now we're friends. Like, we're friends, and we've, we just have a great relationship. And – and I think the more that you can bring along people who have been in moments like this to, to help um, to help our young women and with their experience, I think it's it's just invaluable. So um, just such a great addition to our to our team and our program. So Rachel, what's it been like to be back? I mean, the cool moment, and I'll let you in on this Ahmad at Northwestern was Lindsay and Rachel are obviously there. Caroline Shudlick is there. Mm -hmm. Between the three of them, there's like 7,500 points on the floor. You toss in uh, Kelly Curry, <laughs> yeah. who had 1,000. She's also yeah, on staff. Thousand, there's yeah. like 8,500 points. A lot. And now you've got all these kids running around looking up to you guys. So, Rachel, I'm curious, like, from your perspective, what it's like to, you know, the, the players here probably watched you at the U and certainly now in the WNBA. What's it like to be a mentor for them like Lindsay was for you as well coming up? Yeah, it's super special. It's it's crazy, like when you say it, it's very like full circle. I think we kind of talked about that. You said like you looked up to Caroline Shudlick, and I was like, it, everything that Lindsay was saying about Caroline was like what I felt about Lindsay. Like I looked up to her so much, and I wanted to fall in her footsteps, and I've literally stalked her footsteps <laughs> throughout my entire life, like literally to Connecticut, to Lynx, whatever. So it's it's so crazy, and it was cool that she was saying that in front of all the girls, because you know we want to be those role models for them, and. I hope that like we can continue to lead and, and grow women's basketball, and especially in the state of Minnesota, there's so much talent, and we want to be able to keep that talent here and, and you know grow the culture here and everything. And um, so it's just been really special to be a part of it. Having gone through everything you went through as a player, everybody kind of understands college is not high school. It's kind of like a job. There are some really really hard days. Coming in as the director of quality control right now. How do you insert your leadership to some of these players who you see maybe struggling on the side where you say, like, hey, there are better days ahead. How do you help those young players without overstepping, should I say? Yeah. I think just like you said, I just try to be there for them, be a listening ear. Sometimes I don't need to actually say that much. Sometimes I just need someone to listen to. Um, but also just give feedback. I mean, I've been through it. I've been through injuries. Um, I've been through a lot of losses and just a bunch of different um, adversity. So I just try to like kind of speak on my moments that I've had and just be really understanding to what they're going through and don't judge, you know, how they're going through it. Because I was an 18, 19 year old and I made mistakes too. Like I say it first, you know, especially like in school, like I don't want to go to class, but it is what it is. <laughs> you know, but you've got to get it done. So I, I can really like understand where they're coming from. And I just try to be like a good listener, but also like, hey, I get it. I, I understand, but 
look where we are now and you know you can always get out of these situations and it's going to get better. And Lindsay what's it like just having a pro in the building you know an active pro just re-signed yeah. with the links that was the breaking news of the week thanks for the scoop by the way we could have gotten a nice scoop but told us, yeah, yeah I got but the okay. I got the press release no quality <laughs> control on that one I got the press release like everybody right. else but even I know like Shimmy has talked about his associate head coach Shimmy Gray Miller has talked about just showing up at Williams Arena and there's Rachel by herself with some cones just going to work that your players can see what a pro does and how a pro goes about their business. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I walked in today and Rachel had already been working out for a half hour at least um, as, as she's starting to prepare for her training camp with the Lynx, um, which, which obviously we're, we're so thrilled um, with Rachel being back with the Lynx. But you walk, her, you walk in and she's already in here working and then she's in our staff meeting and then, you know, in the film session, in practice, and just, I mean, it's just she's put in – She's already put in I don't know how many hours today, and then and then physically as well. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, you know, when you can see it. So like, you know, at that time when Carol Ann came and spoke to us when I was a, you know freshman sophomore, I, I think it was sophomore year. Um, macaroni Grill. Macaroni you Grill, knew that part. Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. She was in the ABL, yep. and then so you can see it. So like, if you can. It's, it's when you see it and you see somebody doing that, then you like have even much more of the belief that you can do it. So you're physically seeing a pro here. So once you and then you can see, okay, this is what she does. This is what this is how she takes care of her body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The whole thing. If you see it, then you can you believe it even more. Mm -hmm. And so I think just having somebody who's tangibly here, who's and we're going to be at her WNBA games all summer, uh, supporting her and supporting the links, no question. Uh, but I just think that's just so invaluable, and she just is so great with, with the women and everybody on our, our team, everybody within our organization. She's so great that it just, like she said, it makes it fun to just come in every day. Rachel, we have less than a minute, but I want to ask you this question. How competitive is this team thanks to Coach Whalen? Because we know how competitive she mm -hmm. is, and I'm sure it's kind of running <laughs> down. We ran a segment of half-court shots between you two, and it looks like Coach oh, Whalen was a great all the time. Those two banners so How are the players learning oh, from Coach? So good, yeah. Oh, yeah. The girls are so competitive. It's hilarious. I mean, <laughs> just when these have court shots are enough, it's so funny. But no, they've learned. They've learned. Everyone that you've, and knows Lindsay is like that's the thing I've loved about her. She's so competitive, and she doesn't care who you are. She's gonna come out and and wanna you know beat up on you. So the girls have learned that. I see it in their eyes, and they're learning it every single day. So it's been really fun. Okay. Uh, real quick, because we got to go to break. The Gold Blooded Podcast, hosted by Rachel Banham. Every other week, right? Yep, Wherever you get week. your favorite podcast, you okay. can use a couple of gophers. She's about to have all of our jobs when she's done with the WNBA, so <laughs> we're going to be nice to her now. <laughs> in hopes that she'll hire us in, what, five, ten years, something okay. like that. But I the Gold-Blooded Podcast, check it out. And we appreciate you joining the set for the Coaches Show. I'm sure me. we'll see you around here in the near future. Absolutely. All right, when we return, the gophers sported some unique Black History Month shirts, and they were created by one of their very own. We'll have more details on the other side of the break. Back to the Gopher Coaches Show. We're back. Our last and final block. I'm Ahmad Hicks, Justin Gard, Lindsey Whalen. Coach, Black History Month is really important for a lot of people. I think black history should be shared all throughout the year, not just in February. But you guys took it one step further. Mm -hmm. So we're not just going to talk about black history. We're going to let one of our players create shirts that we're going to wear on the court. Yep. Talk to me about how that came to life and why you gave Rose, Rose Mishaw the green light to do such a thing. Well, I, I believe it started with um, with our general manager, uh, Melissa Maines, and I think um, Coach Shimmy, um, um, you know, associate head coach, Shimmy Gray-Miller. I believe it was um, we had a design earlier on in the season um, when we had um, – you know, when, you know, proud to play on native land when we had um, those shirts that we wore, um, you know, around, um, you know, some Native American history. And so um, Rose is, um, she is a tremendous artist. Mm -hmm. And she, um, whether it's, whether it's hair, whether we see her drawing, um, just an unbelievable um, job. It was really um, just, just fascinating how, like I said, I don't know how you are, like, that creative to um, to be able to design something like that, but but all the credit goes to her and um, and as as I mentioned, um, our staff as well. And to think she said that it didn't take long because she said yeah. once she's passionate yeah. about something, yeah, that's true. It's right yeah. to it. Now I want to go back to the basketball court. Obviously, a tougher situation heading to Michigan State after everything that just happened a couple of weeks ago. We know sports is bigger than just a game. Is there a certain message that you have to share with your players about going there, stepping into that atmosphere after what just happened, or is it just a normal day for you guys? Well, um, yeah, well, no. I mean, you know, I, I don't think that there 
it, it's hard to really grasp um, when you hear of these things like what normal is anymore. And I just, um, it's it's hard to really, you know, we're, we're, whether you're a coach or whether you're a teacher, or whether you're a parent, like, you don't really know sometimes what to say. Um, mm -hmm. You know, TV personalities, radio right. personalities in, in different roles. Um, so what you try to do is just um, be there. Um, you know, create safe spaces and environments for people to be able to talk through feelings and talk through fears and talk through vulnerabilities. And so that's because I don't know any, I, but that's all I would, that's all I know. So I know going in um, to this game, it's, um, you know, obviously, you know, been a really tough, you know, tough, tough, you know, week or stretch and um, for our, our Michigan State, um, you know, sisters. And I know that um, it's been a tough Tough stretch, so um, we'll be there, and um, all we can do is continue to, to be there for everybody and um, continue to pray and hope that um, these things at some point um, stop happening. But it's just obviously we're it's been tough times for all of us. For sure. Well, one thing I talked to Ben Johnson about on the radio show last week because they were supposed to be in yeah. East Lansing, you know, basically 24 hours after that obviously got canceled. He said the one thing I've learned as a coach is when things come up like this, we've got to be the ones talking to them. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, 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 here, they're getting the info, they're learning the info. We didn't really have to think about this when we were going through school, yeah. right? The world yeah. has changed so much. Says it's important that we know they want to talk about it. We've yeah. got to make sure that we're there yeah. for them. Yeah. Well, I think that's just it. And I think even, like, to me, I don't know the right things to say. But, like, as long as you're compassionate and there for people, I think that that's a start, you know. Um, you know, and I, I just, it's, it's obviously just been lots, so many, you know, different tragedies and things like that. Um, and we get to go play basketball on Wednesday and, um, you know, practice and travel and get there. But, um, you know, I think sometimes it's, um, yeah, the game, obviously they cancel the game and sports becomes secondary. Um, but sports is also, yep, sports is also, um, I think, can bring communities together and people, keep people together, and that's what we have to do. And we'll end it on that note. Thanks, Coach Whaley, yeah. for a great season. We appreciated everything. That's Justin Gard. I'm Ahmad Hicks. The Gopher Culture Show ends here.